He's very credible. And the people on MSNBC who made fun of me when I said uh, we had an informant that was missing, they should feel like fools right now. They are fools. Uh, and this is their worst nightmare because, uh, again, this is a credible witness that the FBI flew all the way to Brussels to interview and sent several agents to interview. Recapping the news, James Comer's big witness is missing because he's running from the law. He is a literal fugitive from justice. Gal Luft, a dual U.S. Israeli citizen, is also facing charges for arms tra trafficking, violating sanctions against Iran. He has been indicted for being an unregistered agent of the Chinese state. Here's the thing. He was arrested in Cyprus back in February and then subsequently fled and remains a fugitive. OK, so what happens now to the Republican stunt to take down the Biden administration? Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland is the ranking member of the Oversight Committee that James Comer is currently the chair of, and he joins me now. Um, it's good to have you, Congressman Raskin. What, what do you make of all of this? Well, this was going to be the, the big uh, mystery whistleblower witness who was finally going to redeem the last six months of uh, wasted effort and failures in um, Republican investigations on the Oversight Committee. And suddenly, uh, the whole country knows now the reason he was missing is because he's a fugitive from the U.S. government, uh, fleeing these charges of uh, making false statements, uh, being an, uh, an arms trafficker, trying to set up this uh, Chinese arms for Iranian oil deal, um, and then also failing to register as a, uh, a foreign agent. Um, and, you know, a series of multiple felonies. Um, and it's extraordinary to me, as I was leaving the Capitol this evening, to learn that my colleagues, rather than um, simply going home and trying to ride out the news day, are doubling down now and saying that the Department of Justice is going after him because of the wealth of information that he presumably has to give them about, I don't know what, their previous failed efforts at getting Joe Biden, the, um, st the suspicious activities reports that went nowhere and revealed nothing on Biden or their Form 1023, um, which also exploded their allegations of bribery um, about Biden because it turned out to be the same recycled Giuliani stuff that was rejected by Donald Trump's yep. own U.S. attorney in the Western District of Pennsylvania. So none of it's leading anywhere, and yet uh, they're continuing to dive back in like the cult members they've become. Well, I just want to be clear on that. So my understanding is this indictment, the indictment happened last November. So it happened nine months ago, somewhere around there, right? Uh, eight or nine months ago. Then he's apprehended in Cyprus in February. Then he jumps bail. I mean, he, he escapes, right? So now it's like a little bit of like the mini Trump thing where Trump's like, I declare for the presidency. And now if you indict me, I'm being persecuted. It seems like a little bit of like he puts out this video being like, they're coming after me for my wealth of information well knowing that he's been indicted by the government for stuff he's done. Like, it seems like maybe the Occam's razor here is he's trying to use this as a shield to protect himself from, you know, being brought to justice. Well, you got it. I think Gal Luft uh, wants to use the Republican Party exactly the same way that Donald Trump is using the Republican Party, as a right. shield from criminal investigation and prosecution for accountability for his actions, the same way that George Santos wants to use the Republican Party as an effort uh, to yeah. essentially launder all of his crimes and all of his money. It's the exact same thing uh, with this guy, but he's using the House Oversight Committee for those purposes. Now, I want to talk about another allegation here, which I think is uh, uh, another thing that Comer has pursued, which to me ha has a higher degree of credibility because there's a named individual in it. There is an IRS whistleblower who we know actually worked at the IRS who has filed a whistleblower complaint, and he has alleged that there was political interference that happened from the Department of Justice, other U.S. attorneys, and maybe Merrick Garland as regards the Hunter Biden case, and that David Weiss, the Trump-appointed prosecutor, uh, who, who oversaw that case was not allowed to pursue the case in the ways he wanted to. That's the allegation. Um, I, I think it's a more serious allegation because there's like a real actual person there who's actually gone. Um, so there's now a letter from Weiss basically knocking this down to Lindsey Graham and saying, no, this is all nonsense. Where do you come down on it? Well, right. And of course, Weiss is uh, Donald Trump's... Um, uh, U.S. attorney. 
uh, but he's a United States attorney for the Department of Justice. And, um, you know, th those would be serious allegations, but uh, there's a process for going through determining whether or not they're true. Weiss uh, rejects them and denies them. But really what we see is uh, a grasping at straws, an attempt um, to find something, anything, to get at Joe right. Biden. And why? Because it's a massive distraction from the fact that Donald Trump had one overriding purpose in being in office and one overriding purpose in coming back into office. He had a money-making operation. He converted the presidency into an instrument of profit maximization for himself and his family. And he wants to keep this grift going. So there's got to be an effort to bring down Joe Biden by putting him in the same category, which yeah. is, you know, ridiculous. And it's not convincing to the American people. Quickly and finally, uh, Ben Cardin, who is the senator from your state, has announced he will not be seeking re-election. Uh, there are folks uh, looking to uh, throw their hat in the ring. You made the decision this week that you will not run for Senate. Why'd you make that decision? Well, yeah, <clears throat> I'm not throwing my bandana in the ring at this point uh, because we're look, we're we're still in the thick of this fight to defend American democracy and democratic institutions um, against the autocrats and the theocrats and the kleptocrats like Donald Trump. Um, and I'm exactly where I need to be as the ranking Democrat at the Oversight Committee. And when we win the House back in 2024, and we will, I will be the chair of the Oversight Committee. And I want to see this through. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that we're going to win the House back. I'm going to be going all across the country to campaign for fellow Democrats. And I'd rather be campaigning for Democrats across America than against uh, fellow Democrats in Maryland. And so, well, you know, that's the judgment that I've made at this point.